Hi, my name is Ed Rudiger, and I'm pastor here at Cove Presbyterian Church. I'm so glad that you called our prayer line. Before we have a word of prayer together, though, I'd like to share with you some scripture and a devotion I wrote. The scripture passage comes from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made, the, made foolishness the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. How many of you were wise by human standards? Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. In his devotion that I entitled, Avoid the Madness. In a few weeks, we'll be sharing uh, in uh, an event here in the United States called March Madness. And it's the one time a year when over 60 college teams enter a single elimination tournament to decide the national championship. Now, this team, the team who wins, may not necessarily be the best college basketball team in the NCAA, just the one who's gotten on a hot streak and run the table. And to make it as fair as possible, the teams in the tournament aren't supposed to play in their home arenas. Therefore, no team should have a home court advantage. Of course, that's not the way it always works out. I mean, there are times when teams are playing at home. Still, an effort is made to avoid having this happen because it just wouldn't be fair and might reduce the potential madness of March. And I'll tell you, I think Christians need to avoid doing the same kind of thing when sharing the gospel. You see, for reasons I'm not sure I understand, instead of talking about the mystery and wonder of divine love and irresistible grace, many believers seem content to ground the truth of the gospel on rational thought. For example, they use intellectual arguments to prove the existence of God as though people can be reasoned into the kingdom of heaven. Sadly, when they choose to take this approach, not only are they disregarding Paul's warning and reducing eternal truth to just another intellectual theory, they're playing in someone else's arena. In other words, they're sacrificing their own home court advantage and trying to best folks who may desperately need a little love and grace in their lives. They're trying to best them at their own game. And to me, that just doesn't make any sense. Therefore, maybe it's time for believers to avoid this kind of madness. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, be with the caller. Give him comfort and support and hope. In the name of Christ. Amen. I'm so glad you called. I'd love to visit with you. If you're ever in the neighborhood, that's 3404 Main Street here in Wharton. Come on by Cove and we'll have a visit. Of course, if you're around here Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, we'd love to see you in worship. And so until I talk with you again, I want you to remember, you're a child of God. And God loves you very much. Goodbye.